Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are checking out a new Python game engine. It's called the Ursina Engine, I believe I'm saying that right because it appears to be a made up word as we will see in just a few seconds. But this one is an interesting one for me because frankly Python doesn't have a ton of game engines and something that you can quickly get in there or start coding with and get some really cool immediate results from is also incredibly lacking. So that is exactly what this guy provides. Now before we continue on, I gotta warn you, my voice might sound a little weird. I am running on cold medication right now to even keep me going. So let's keep this one as short as possible. And I apologize if I sound a bit weird. All right, so anyways, uh, about a year and a half ago, I did a roundup of game engines by programming languages. So if you're a C++, C Sharp, Lua, JavaScript, or Hacks developer, uh, I kind of did a rundown of all the options available. I'll link that down below if you're interested in checking that out. And also, I did one on Python. And here you can see it in front of you. The truth of the matter is, there aren't a ton of Python game engines out there, especially when we get into the world of 3D, where we have Panda 3D, the Blender game engine, and then UPBGE are your options. This is a fork of the Blender game engine, and the irony is, since this was all launched, this guy was deprecated. So Blender Game Engine uh, does not exist in Blender 2.8 or beyond. So really, you have two options when it comes to 3D in the world of Python. You've got um, Panda 3D, or you got UPBGE. Or I guess you could kind of roll your own using uh, bindings like PyOgre or whatever. But not a ton of options out there. I guess you could also technically argue that GDScript is like Python, the scripting language in Godot, but that's kind of stretching things. Now this is called the Ursina engine, which I kind of did a quick look up on, and um, Ursina doesn't really mean anything. It's, it's There's a planet orbiting the sun called 860 Ursina. There is a location in Pennsylvania with a population of like six people, and it's the Italian name for a village in Slovenia. So I don't think it's any of these things. Part of me actually thinks that it's meant to be the Ursine engine, not Ursina engine, uh, because this guy, and you can see the definition of Ursine, is relating to or resembling bears. And that makes all kinds of sense because this engine is actually built on top of the Panda game engine. So it's making Panda a whole lot easier and more approachable to use. If you want to have something that is just codable, you can just sit there and start typing some Python code, uh, you know, 10, 20 lines and have a full functioning title. That is what this game engine is all about. But the heavy lifting underneath the scenes, that's being done by the Panda game engine, which I actually am quite a fan of. I did a video of it in the past. I will link that down below too. So if you want to check out Panda that this is based on top of, that is available there. So Ursine engine would make a ton more sense, but that ain't the name. Uh, by the way, if you want to check out the Ursina engine, it's available at ursinaengine.org. You'll notice there's uh, it's not an HTTPS site, which they should probably fix. Um, but don't let that worry you too much. Now, getting this guy up and going is a fairly straightforward process. Uh, there are a couple of requirements. Now, the, the, the easiest way to do it is this way right here. So basically do a pip install. Now, pip is a package installer for Python, and we've got a couple of requirements. Now, first off, we need to have Python installed. So uh, Python run this from the command line. If the answer doesn't say, so if it says command not found, you need to install Python and make sure that it is installed to the path. But other than picking the path, um, option, you just go with the exact standard stock options for using Python, but it does need to be the 3.6 or higher branch. So do be sure this is the newest version, at least as of recording. And then you also need to make sure that you have pip installed. Now pip should have been installed by default as part of the Python install. If you chose default options, but you can run pip dash capital V and it will tell you the version that is available. So we've got uh, a good version of pip installed. We got a good version of Python installed. Now we're ready to do the installation and the straightforward installation instructions say pip install and then this command right here, the GitHub archive to go from. Now the thing is this didn't actually work for me because of some permission errors. Um, it might be to, due to the way that I installed my Python, but if you get some permission errors, just add dash dash user and it'll make sure that it installs it globally, but globally to your user only. Now your end result from running this command are gonna look a little bit different than mine because you can see I've already actually run this, but this is gonna go and resolve all of the various dis different dependencies that the Ursina engine has. Now once we've done that, we're gonna probably wanna go ahead and grab some code. You can just clone down this archive. Also, you can build it this way if you so wish. It will take some more time, um, but there is your other option as well. So clone this guy down. Uh, it's available over on GitHub. So open up GitHub here. You'll see the source code is all available here. It is under the MIT license. And what we're particularly interested in is the samples folder. So once Ursina has been installed at a global level, it's really simple and straightforward to get started with. So we're going to look at a couple of the examples it came with. And the big thing that this guy's advertising is 
It's simple, it's got a UI layer built over top, and of course they've got their own features and functionality they built over top of Panda as well. So let's take a look at one of these examples in action. So I've already, I've already cloned that repository and I switched into the samples folder. So we look here and we will see we've got various different options we can go ahead and run. Let's start with one of the, the more impressive options. So we're gonna go just Python and then we're gonna run the Minecraft clone. And this give you an idea of the kind of stuff that you can do uh, with the Ursina engine. So here you can see very uh, straightforward. You can start dropping uh, things into the world. We can use the, uh, ooh, I'm going to fly off the screen in a second, but we can use the WASD keys and uh, w, Q and E to go up and down. And there you see kind of just building voxel worlds. We can kind of go off into the, the world as we wish with this and just start building things out. Now the kicker is this guy right here is really simple. So I'm gonna just close that down and let's just load that up. So that was the uh, Minecraft clone. So we'll just open this up in Visual Studio Code. And here you can see what is involved. It is very, very, I don't want to install any of this stuff, go away. Uh, very, very clean and straightforward. Creating your app is a single line of code. Uh, you see here, we've got a class definition for creating voxels. We've got some input handling. Again, really straightforward. So um, it's an input-based callback and that's it. What we just saw was handled by this guy. And of course, we're inheriting in the first person controller that evolved to make life a lot easier for us and so on. But really, that's very little code for creating quite a bit here. So that's the cool thing that we've got going on uh, with the Ursina engine. It is quite clean and straightforward. You really minimalist apps. Let's look at another example here. The other one I kind of like on the same level is there's, um, uh, which one is it? Hex. All right, so let's let's load up Hexcraft. So Hexcraft right here, same sort of thing, but hexagonal. So there we've got an environment map going on in the background. So we can left click to grow things. We can right click to shrink them. And there you see the basis of uh, a hexagonal Minecraft X environment. And you can shrink, you can grow. Uh, it's it's neat and it's very very minimal amount of code. So again, if you're looking for like that. A uh, nice beginner friendly thing going on. That's um, kind of what this guy provides. On top of that, there's also some convenient stuff there. There's an automatic model importer for uh, PSD and uh, blend files. So if you want to bring your content in, it should make it really simple for you. Um, and then we'll kind of head on back. Oh, so we'll look at one other example here. So another thing that they added here over top of the uh, Panda Game Engine was a UI layer. So let's load up Column Graph again. Spelt wrong, but uh, Python column graph. And you can get an idea of some of the stuff you could do here. So we got multiple different UI layers going on and we can randomize them, you get different amounts. But you see here, we can actually right click and orbit in three dimensional. So here you can see what the UI is capable of. Very simple, straightforward, but it does give you an idea. And again, you can tell by the bite size of most of these examples, like these are one to 4K. That Minecraft clone again, being at 869 bytes is really impressive. We can even draw like a really simple world grid. So let's just look at the code for that world grid. There is what you need to run uh, you know, a nice grid in your world and a very simple, straightforward app. And we'll go ahead and load that guy up and you get an idea of what it does, but it's very normal. It's basically an infinite grid. And as you can see from the code, it's very, very, very minimum required to get up and going. So that's definitely a cool engine. If Python is your jam of choice for programming languages and you want to work kind of at the coding level, but you want something that's really easy and approachable, that's exactly what this guy provides. It, it is uh, a very minimalist, but capable uh, setup. I, I'm actually pretty impressed with it. Once again, the source code is up on GitHub. I'll link all that in the linked article down below. You see it, it's under the MIT license. This guy is piggybacking on the Panda Game Manager. So if you search in the repository for Panda 3D, you'll see it's calling into Panda code to make some of this stuff work. So it, it, it is definitely building on the works of others. And I think, again, I think it's supposed to be called the Earth Sign Engine. That would make a lot more sense. Maybe the Panda, a bear, a bear-like, and so on. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're not hiding the fact that the, the powering here is actually being done by the Panda Game Engine. So the cool thing is we head on back over to, all right, where did my... Come on, let's head back to their website. Oh, hell, let's just type it. All right, so it's under the ursinaengine.org. 
like so. I don't know why it didn't show up. But if you want to get started, we do have a breakdown on uh, tutorials to get you up and going and some uh, the definition behind the examples we were just looking at. Also have solid documentation. Um, it's weird because there's no text description of anything you want to work with. So if you want to work with the camera, for example, there's there's just a list of the functions and the default values for it. But a lot of times there's actually a um, little code sample to get you up and going. So let's say, for example, we need to have audio. So we want to play some audio, jump in here, you'll notice. So there's no documentation on it, but it's pretty self-explanatory for the most part. You see what the defaults are. But then in almost every case, you get a very simple code example that shows you how to use that particular feature. And yeah, it's pretty straightforward, simple um, game engine on the whole. It's pretty new. It's a single developer effort. Uh, d definitely like to raise the profile of these kinds of projects out there. And I know a lot of people like to dabble with the code level stuff. And this is about as beginner friendly as they get, especially if you do want to work in, um, you know, 3D, but you want to type mostly with code. Like if you want to work with a full phone editor and all that stuff, you're better off using something like Unity or Godot or Unreal Engine or something. But if you're looking to get like code based and you're a fan of the Python um, programming language, this is definitely one worth checking out. And I will say, even though as a fan of Panda 3D, this is a heck of a lot easier to get started with than Panda is. It's kind of like, you know, a, a layer of ease built on top of all of that. So that was it. The only last thing I want to point out, other than the fact that HTTPS is missing for some strange reason this documentation does not work well outside of firefox so if you get it so it's overlapping for some reason i, I had the same issue something to be aware of all right hey my throat still works that's good uh, and i'm done for now hope you guys found that interesting again that's the ursina um Game engine available at ursinaengine.org. Uh, again, I think it should be called the Ursine engine. Let me know what your opinion of that is down below. Or do you know another meaning of Ursina uh, that uh, I don't? If so, let me know those things. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.